Hello, making a quick little video. It looks a little bit different this time. It's not of my face and the uh, wall with a billion things on it. It is of the screen, and that is because I think the screen is going to be a lot more helpful to demonstrate what we're talking about today, which is the grade 10 numeracy assessment. The timing of this is such that uh, one week and one day on January 23rd, one week and one day from now, we will be writing the numeracy 10 assessment for all of the grade 10s here at Van Tech. And I have had some students and some parents just asking, like, how much to worry about it? Uh, how can you lower my stress around it? How important is it? Who's looking at it? And I wanted to just quickly, uh, and how can I prepare for it? And I wanted to just quickly make a video to outline uh, quickly how you can do that. So if you're interested, you can. It looks like I'm actually redundant because I even have a Google search right here. Uh, short note, they're not actually saying it, but no, they don't. Um, so let's talk about it. The numeracy 10 assessment is not so much a math assessment, although it quickly gets grouped into that. It's actually an assessment of numeracy skills, which extend well beyond just the ideas of math. Nobody's going to be asking you to do a linear equation of y equals mx plus b here. They're much more interested to see, can you problem solve with numeracy-like ideas? There's going to be a lot of writing, or sorry, reading, I should say, included in this as well. A little bit of writing as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a bit too simplistic to say that this is a math assessment and that the literacy is an English assessment. They most closely link with that, but it's definitely more nuanced and a bit more complex. So just to get us going here, um, as you can see, I've Googled BC Numeracy Assessment and the very top one that gets you right to where we want. This page right here has all the information that students are going to want or a parent might want. It outlines what you will be doing. And the example I'm going to show you, I think, is from 2017. They are using the same types of questions and the same level of difficulty year over year because these are standardized tests and the government wants them to be predictable and consistent. One of the big reasons for that is this is not so much, in some ways, an assessment of students. It's actually an assessment of how effective schools are of teaching this. Uh, they want to collect this information so that they can um, answer the question, how effectively is our education system helping teach students numeracy? Or in April, when we do the literacy, teaching literacy. So uh, they standardize them all and... Uh, and, and the, there, as we'll talk about, there, is, there aren't really ramifications to worry about so much for students um, with how they do, but of course we want our students to do as well as possible. So I'm going to go right past the opening information and past the videos, which some students have told me have been helpful, but we're not going to look at them too much. I want to get right into where students normally like to go, which is this sample grade 10 numeracy assessment. They have an online version because students actually do this online. We use computer labs and school computers that get shared out. So uh, on the day, January 23rd, uh, students will either in the morning or the afternoon session be doing these. Um, and so it's good to practice on a computer and you can do it exactly the way they do. If you're like me and you kind of prefer a PDF version uh, and it's also a little bit quicker to navigate, then that's also a great option. And there are answer keys that go. These, these will be the same, I believe. So it doesn't matter which version you open. I'm gonna open up the print questions here. I've got them loaded. Here's our sample assessment. I'm going to go right into it here just to show you a couple examples of what I'm saying when I say it's not fair to say it's math, and it's definitely not fair to say it's a math 10-based course. You certainly do not need to have done math 10, either workplace, apprenticeship, or foundations pre-calculus to be able to do this. Uh, here's the very first question coming up, and it gives you this information to start. It's a great example of the sorts of things students are asked to do. So as you can see, they're trying to be really cool here and show newspapers. Uh, as if that's somehow new, and they're showing water use, and then they've got a graph. Graphs are a perfect example of the sorts of things that they use, and uh, this is going to be like, okay, can you essentially read this graph? If I scroll down past the indoor water use and conventional appliances and fixtures uh, and go right to the first question, you can see it says, which of the following community uses on average between 250 and 450 liters per day? And then it lists four of them. So the students are able to normally have a split screen so they can see the questions and they can see the graphs and information as well. I'm just going to park that 250, 450 in my head here, and I'm going to go back to the graph. So can Mr. Van, let's find out here, read this graph and determine which are between the 250 line and the 450 line? Well, if I did it correctly, it looks like it's Port Alberni. They're just over 250 here, and it looks like Whistler. Whistler is uh, in between 4 and 450, so those would be our two. Everything else is using water beyond. So there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing these are actually real, because I know Port Alberni gets a ton of rain, so maybe they don't need as much water use. But that's just a guess. Uh, so 
I would, I would check off Whistler and I would check off Port Alberni and I would be done. Uh, let's look at one more question here just so you can see an example. Again, it's another example of a graph one. So here it says, which representation of a family's weekly water use best illustrates? So this is a judgment question. Can the student make judgments as to uh, where and how water could be saved? So if I'm reading this, again, as you can see, as I'm going through this, this is as much understanding words and word problems as it is anything to do with math. So uh, best illustrates where and how water could be saved. So uh, where and how, I'm thinking it's gonna be much more valuable to have it broken down like this, as opposed to, dear Lord, whatever's going on with this line graph. I know that there's a C and a D here, so let's have a look here, okay. Uh, this is splitting it up all by, I'm just kind of thinking out loud the way a student hopefully would. This is looking at how everybody used, but it doesn't say, the, it doesn't have the legend that this one does, so it doesn't say how they used, it just says how much the sibling used. And then this one is kind of the opposite, where it doesn't split it up by person, but it says that the toilet's getting a lot more used than the tap, and leaks are really not an issue. So I'm thinking both of these together kind of make this guy, and this one's confusing. So I'm going to strongly suggest we go with, uh, go with B here. And that's how the students are looking to approach this. It's a series of uh, multiple choice questions, and then, uh, and then it scrolls down to see if I can find the other example. You can see it's all on, those are all questions related to that. Um, and then sometimes there are also at the bottom here, let's see if we can find them. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, here we go. So this is, they've got question 26, and is there also a 27, where it has a bunch of information, a couple short answers. Oh, just one then. So just one, but you can see, um, there is a question, I went past it, where you are actually doing on paper with pen or, pen, pen or pencil. So there is mostly multiple choice, and then there is a little bit of a short answer as well. The things they are testing here are beyond just having, it's, this is why, again, why it's not math. They are not, did you solve the equation? They are, can you justify and explain, for example? Can you come up with a reasonable answer? The uh, Multiple choice is more just one answer. The other version, the long answer, is going to be much more interpretive and is read by a human being. They haven't got AI doing this one yet. Uh, I just pulled up the assessment key here. So, oh, I think we got it right. Okay, there you go. A and C, did they do A and C? Let's have a look. Oh, God. No, I'm worried Mr. Van maybe didn't get it right. Let's see. A and C, was it? Yeah, we said Whistler and Port Alberni, so that's good. And did we go graph? Yeah, we did go graph B. I think that would be the B here. So you can quickly check your answers. Um, and as you can see, they're uh, not giving specifics because how could they? They're giving constructed response questions and they have a scoring guide and examples of exemplars that you can also see on the website for the short answer. So again, not a math test. It's not something that gets used by post-secondary. It does go as a rubric, as a one, two, three, or four onto your transcript, one being beginning, two being, or I should say emerging, one being emerging, two being developing, three being proficient, and four being extending. It is not used by universities and colleges. Uh, they have been very clear in saying they only want data from the last two years, so they only use grade 11 and 12 data and marks. That is to say that the Literacy 12 assessment does get used um, by one currently, UBC, and might get used by more in the future. But this is not something to worry about. You cannot wreck your post-secondary chances as long as you complete the assessment. You just have to do your best. Okay, so that's it for me. I hope that is very helpful. Send questions to me or have your student, or if you are the student, come on by. Take care.